So today we're going to talk about the seven benefits to a fever. Now you might think a fever is something bad, like a disease or something, but it's something normal that your immune system creates as a defense mechanism against certain infections. So it's a very good thing that you don't want to get rid of right away. Let's first talk about the benefits of a fever. Number one, it restricts the production of pathogens like bacteria and the reproduction of viruses. Number two, it will decrease the time of infection. So if you're going to take something to shut down that fever right away, guess what? You're going to have the infection longer. Number three, it mobilizes your white blood cell. It recruits more soldiers to fight the enemy. Number four, it enhances phagocytosis. So what is phagocytosis? You have these immune cells that have the ability to eat viruses and bacteria and parasites. A fever will enhance the ability of a phagocyte to do its job better. Number five, a fever decreases endotoxins. Endotoxins come from pathogens. When a pathogen invades your body and they die, they release endotoxins and create all sorts of negative effects. Guess what? A fever can minimize that effect. Number six, a fever will increase the growth of T cells. T cells stand for the thymus cell. There are several of them, and you have T cells that are killer T cells, which are comparable to your special forces. You have other T cells that are like commanders, which guide and coordinate the entire war against pathogens. And then you have other T cells that regulate or moderate the amount of collateral damage. So they will kind of put the fire out, get rid of inflammation if it gets out of control. Well, fever will actually increase the growth of T cells. Number seven, a fever decreases the mortality rate. So let's say, for example, you're in an infection and you let the fever run its course versus taking something to turn off that fever. Guess what? There's some interesting studies that if you let the fever do its job, you will have a decrease in death rate. What you want to do sometimes is enhance the fever. Get into bed, put the covers on, and sweat it out. Take a hot bath. All of that really will help in stimulating some of these immune reactions. Now, what's interesting is there's no agreed upon normal upper limit for someone's temperature. Some people would say that 99 degrees Fahrenheit would be a normal temperature or the upper limits. Or some others would say it's 100.9 degrees Fahrenheit as the upper limit of normal temperature. That would be 37.2 degrees Celsius to 38.3 degrees Celsius. The other question is what temperature should you let your body go to? And I know people are concerned that if it goes too high, they're going to have brain damage. That actually is a myth. You would have to really let your body get above 108 degrees to create uh, brain damage and for a long period of time. And that could occur if you actually had a fever and you were in a very hot place. But typically, if you let the temperature um, rise between 100 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 37.8 degrees to 40 Celsius, just realize it's a beneficial thing. You're going to reduce the duration of infection. You're going to stimulate and enhance the immune defenses. And by the way, certain immune cells that specialize in killing viruses do it through releasing uh, things like interferon. Now, when interferon is released to kill off the virus, if you experience the flu-like symptoms or muscle aches or even a fever, realize those usually are normal. Let your body go through its process and don't try to get rid of the symptoms right off the bat because you could weaken your immune system in its fighting capacity. Now, if you haven't seen my video on how to boost the immune system, I put it up right here. Check it out.